Hi everyone, and welcome to Wealth Museum's Great Wealth Hub video series. My name is Ken Irvin, and I'm the Education Coordinator at Wealth Museums. I'm the museum's teacher, and I love to tell people about this great city. Uh, and the people from our town made an impact on Guelph, Canada, or the world. I really like our history, and I want to share stories about Guelph and its people. Many people like to know about the really famous, who made a big impact. Stories about the really famous are great, but I also like to talk about the people who don't get the attention they deserve. Today, I want to talk to you about Margaret Gillies. I'm sure not many people have heard about her, but she was one of the very first settlers to live in Guelph. Margaret Gillies was 10 years old when she came with her family to Guelph. They originally came from Scotland. Most of the people living in Scotland at that time were farmers, and most of them did not own their land, but worked and lived on farms owned by landlords. The landlords uh, found that they could make more money by raising sheep on their land instead of farming it. So they pushed the farmers off the land and brought in sheep. So thousands of farmers were pushed off and were homeless. The poor farmers looked for other places to live and work. One group of almost 100 Scot uh, Scots left Scotland looking to settle in a new country. They planned to take up farming in Venezuela in South America. They traveled by a ship named the Planet to a place called La Guara in Venezuela in the year 1825. And after living there for one and a half years, they found that the land was not suitable for farming, and the families were starving. The settlement was a total disaster. They left the unsuccessful settlement in Venezuela and were taken to Philadelphia in the United States. From there, they came to Guelph in April of 1827. The settlers were so poor, they could not afford to buy land to develop it into farmland. John Galt, Guelph's founder, gave them land, but they had to work for him to pay it off. Margaret was 10 years old when she and her family arrived in Guelph. They didn't have many possessions to bring with them on their journey to Guelph. Now she may have brought a few things, like some clothes, a blanket, a couple books, and a doll. What do you think she might have brought with her? I have a few items from our museum collection that I think would have been some of the early possessions that the settlers might have had. I think they would have had a trunk to bring all the possessions in because there were no suitcases. Uh, maybe a doll and some blankets. Uh, and here's a griddle, too. Um, now, I do have some things from our education collection. So if you're starting a farm, you'll need an axe to cut down the trees. This whole area was a giant forest, so they needed to take down the trees so they had land to, to plant. Uh, when they cut down the trees, they used the wood to build their homes. Uh, so they'd square the timbers uh, with a felling axe, and then they would use an auger to uh, drill holes in it to connect the logs to make their cabin. Uh, so these are the things that, that the early settler might have needed. Uh, inside the cabin, you know, windows were a real luxury if you had them, um, but they would have had, needed to have light. So before they had candles like this, uh, they would have had something called a Betty lamp. Uh, and this lamp would have been filled with animal fat, and there would have been a wick coming out the end, uh, and this would have been hung up on the wall of your, your cabin with this book. Uh, it would have given not a very good light, it would have been very smoky and, and uh, not very bright, but this was the best thing they had. When they did start to make candles, they usually made them out of uh, animal fat or tallow. Uh, and those were also pretty smoky, not that great. Uh, and the mice really liked to eat them because they were, they were made out of fat. So you had to protect your candles and make sure the mice didn't eat them. This one's actually made out of beeswax. Now, if you had to leave home uh, and move to a new country, um, what would be the most important items for you to take with you? I know um, it'd be a challenge to just pick five items, but uh, maybe make a list of the five things you'd want to take with you if you had to move. Your favorite possessions, maybe your favorite toy or your favorite piece of clothing. Um, and I'd love to see your list. If you want to make out your list, uh, you can add it to our the chat in our comments section and uh, let me know what your, your favorite items would be. Now, the Guelph that Margaret came to was a very different place from the Guelph of today. There was a lot of forest and very few roads. There were very few homes as well. If settlers needed a home, they'd have to build it themselves. You wouldn't have a builder build it like today. Uh, there were no schools, very few businesses or places to go shopping. Uh, most of the settlers, like Margaret's family, were farmers. And for her, her family to be successful farmers, they needed to go to a community that had a good source of water, land that was suitable for farming, maybe a general store or a grist mill where they could grind up their grain for flour, 
Um, a blacksmith would be great. A post office so they could contact family in the outside world. And maybe other settlers so they could have some companionship and friends. When Margaret came, did come to Guelph, she was with a group of over 100 other settlers from Scotland. And they were all part of the unsuccessful group that tried farming in Venezuela. Now, this was, group was known as the Laguarans, and they were named after the failed settlement in Venezuela. The families were sold land north of Guelph in what is known presently as Marden. Um, it's about three kilometers north up the road from uh, Woodlawn Cemetery in Guelph. Uh, the land that they now own was part of a huge forest. Uh, and there were even bears and wolves still living in the forest. Uh, so it was probably pretty scary for Margaret to go out and explore and go into the woods when she had to worry about bears and wolves uh, that might uh, attack her. How do you think Margaret would have felt about the new land that her family had arrived at? It was very different from her home in Scotland. Margaret's family was big by today's standards. There were five children, and all these children were a big help for their mother and father because there was lots of work to do. Uh, starting a new farm had needed a lot of hands. Uh, her father and mother worked very hard and were able to pay off their debts to the Canada Company and John Galt, uh, and they were able to buy a yoke uh, of oxen. So an oxen is basically a big cow that they could harness up and use to pull their plow and, and their wagons. So that was really important. If they were able to afford oxen, then they were doing pretty well. Now, what jobs do you think a 10-year-old girl would have to do on a farm? Most of the heavy work would be done by her older brothers or her father. Things like cutting down trees, pulling up stumps, plowing and harvesting. Margaret, at age 10, would be a big help to her mother. Uh, she would help with the cooking and cleaning of their home. She'd make mend and wash the clothes. She didn't help to care for any farm animals like pigs and cows and chickens. All of these would have been things that Margaret could have easily helped out with. Now, she also would have helped with the mending and making of clothes. So her mother would have taught her how to make clothes. And this is very similar to the type of clothes that Margaret would have worn. Uh, very plain material, um, very long. Margaret always would have worn a dress, never wore pants. Uh, it was almost to the to her ankles, the length of it, uh, and very mid-length sleeves, so you didn't want to get them caught up in your cooking and cleaning when you're work, doing your work. So this is the type of, of outfit that uh, Margaret's mom would have definitely worn. And I've got a few pictures of some, some of the clothes that uh, are from the museum collection that are from that time period. Now, what type of jobs do you help with around the house? Do you have to take care of pets or do the laundry? Uh, do you have to make your bed and keep your room clean? Is, are those the jobs you have to do? What would you like to do on a farm? Would you want to do the same chores as Margaret? Now, one of the reasons Margaret did so many jobs around the house uh, and the farm was because she didn't go to school. When she came to Guelph, there wasn't a school for girls. Uh, she would have done all of her learning at home. Her, maybe her mother or father or older brothers taught her. Uh, she would have learned to read and write and maybe do some basic math, but not much more than that. Uh, her brothers would have had the opportunity to go to school uh, when they had the time. Now, school in Margaret's time was very different from today. All the grades were taught in the same room by the same teacher. Uh, would you want to go to school with your older brother and your younger brother, and have uh, the older kids teaching the younger kids? That's, that happened a lot. Now, school was available when most of the work on the farm was done. In the spring, summer, and fall, children were needed to plant the crops, tend the crops, and harvest the crops. But in the winter, there was less work to do. So once the crops were brought in, uh, children were more available to go to school. Uh, and I'm sure they really liked going to school, as it gave them a break from the hard work on the farm. Now, would you like to go to school for just five months a year? I know my kids would. Um, what if you had to do chores when you weren't at school? Uh, it would be a lot more work. Now, Margaret, she worked really hard to help make the family farm prosper. And being on a farm just outside of town, there wouldn't have been many other children for her to play with, uh, or very much time to play. She was probably kept pretty busy by her mom and dad. She did have brothers and sisters around to help keep her company and play with occasionally. The big highlight of the week for Margaret would have been going into town on Saturday mornings to the market. Market day was a big, exciting time. Here, she would get to see the other children, 
uh, in town and maybe get to see some of her friends that she came to uh, Guelph with from Venezuela and Scotland. Um, now, there would have been a chance to maybe get some new material for a dress to make some new clothes or buy a new animal for the farm, maybe get a cow or some new chickens. Uh, it would have been exciting to see how Guelph was growing at the time, see the new buildings going up or the new roads being cleared out. Uh, so that would have been really exciting for her. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe there's a new building or a new store that might sell sweets. Now, families from all around Guelph would come into the city on market day to shop and visit. It was a really busy time, and that was the big day of the week. Uh, and as Margaret grew up, she stayed on the farm with her, her mom and dad, uh, and she helped her family make the farm prosperous. Uh, from the 50 acres that her father started with, uh, he grew this farm to almost 200 acres. Uh, one of Margaret's older brothers also became a successful farmer and bought a farm right across the road from her dad's farm. And he got married and became very successful there. Now, when Margaret was 20 years old, she married a young man named William McRae in the year 1840. And she lived for some years on the McRae homestead, uh, which was just a few concessions down the road from where Margaret's family farm was. After their marriage, Margaret and William uh, McRae were a typical settler family. Uh, and they came to be a very large household. Uh, Margaret had six sons and two daughters. Uh, and after farming for a while, uh, her husband decided to take a job in Guelph, and they moved into the city and lived on Mill Street. And Margaret lived there until the year 1891, and her husband William became a pattern maker. Uh, after all the travel and hardship at the start of her life, Margaret found a home in Guelph and lived happily in the city, raising and caring for her family here. In the year 1898, her husband William passed away, and three years later, at the age of 74, Margaret passed away. Now, some of you may have been born in Canada. Some of you may have moved to Canada, like Margaret. Now, moving to another country to start a new life takes a lot of courage and a lot of hard work. Your family may have a story about moving to a new home, too. You may want to share your story with us by writing it down or making a video or recording it, and we'd love to hear it uh, if you'd like to share it with us. Uh, your history is just as important as Margaret's. So yeah, we'd love to hear your story. So thank you for coming and joining me today and learning more about one of the very first people from Europe to settle in our city. The struggles that Margaret faced and overcame helped make Guelph the awesome city it is today.